President Obama did the right thing. He came to ground zero today to meet with first responders and the families of 9-11 victims. He also met with firefighters and fired them up with this message. When we say we will never forget, we mean what we say. And our commitment to making sure that justice was done is something that transcended politics, transcended party. It didn't matter which administration was in, it didn't matter who was in charge, we were going to make sure that the perpetrators of that horrible act, uh, that they received justice. Did I just hear President Obama say that it didn't matter which administration it was? President Obama graciously invited former President Bush to the event, but he declined. Originally, a spokesperson for the former president declined because he said Bush has chosen in his post-presidency to remain largely out of the spotlight, though he appreciated the invite. Well, this morning, the New York Daily News, they had a different story. They quoted a source close to Bush saying that President Bush didn't come because he feels President Obama hasn't given the Bush administration enough credit for killing Osama bin Laden. The highly placed source was quoted in the newspaper as saying, Obama gave no credit whatsoever to the intelligence infrastructure the Bush administration set up. That is being hailed from the left and the right as setting in motion the operation that got bin laden it rubbed bush the wrong way well if president bush and members of his administration want some credit they have come to the right place tonight tonight we'll give the bush administration the credit they really deserve when president bush took office he was warned by bill clinton and sandy berger to focus on al-qaeda in fact they inherited a plan for getting bin Laden and al-Qaeda. In early 2001, the Bush administration ignored Richard Clark's attempts to focus them on just that, al-Qaeda. They were the problem. In July of 2001, CIA Director George Tenet tried to tell the president the threat was Osama bin Laden, and it was very real. Bush said at the time, well, he didn't want to swat at flies. In the meantime, the FAA issued at least five security circulars warning of possible hijackings. On August 6, 2001, a day that may live in infamy, Harriet Myers delivered the Presidential Daily Briefing at Crawford, Texas, down at the ranch. The Presidential Daily Briefing was titled, Bin Laden Determined to Strike in the United States. The Bush Terrorism Task Force, headed up by Vice President Dick Cheney, met for the first time on September 10th, 2001. We'll give them credit for that. And credit for this, September 11th, 2001, President Bush, here he is sitting in a Florida classroom, reading a book for six minutes while thousands of Americans were running for their lives in lower Manhattan. He later claimed that he didn't want to scare the children. September 12th, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld tells the president, there aren't any good targets in Afghanistan and urges a strike on Iraq. September 14th, President Bush goes to ground zero and delivers this message. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people, and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Keyword there soon, October 7th, 2001. Here we go. The U.S. Armed Forces launched Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Not long after October 26, 2001, here's President Bush signing the Patriot Act. The government starts to wiretap Americans without a warrant. Just a little bit of a violation of the Constitution. In December of 2001, bin Laden escapes from Tora Bora because Rumsfeld and top U.S. Commander General Tommy Franks held back the necessary forces for a classic sweep and block maneuver. Early 2002, the United States starts using enhanced interrogation on detainees at CIA black sites. Enhanced interrogation. I guess you could say that's a nice word for torture. We didn't know it at the time, but we sure as hell know it now. March 13th, 2002, just six months after 9-11, President Bush stepped out and said this. Again, I don't know where he is. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I repeat what I said. I truly am not that concerned about him. So let's give the Bush administration the credit they're looking for. On August 4th, 2002, President Bush goes golfing in Kennebunkport, Maine, and commented on the war on terror. 
I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. Serious as a heart attack, huh? October 7, 2002, President Bush goes to Cincinnati to scare Americans into going to war in Iraq. He delivers this lie. Facing clear evidence of peril, we cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. So if we're looking for credit, there's more. March 9th, 2003, Bush launches an invasion of Iraq. Troop levels in Afghanistan declined slightly. And of course, bin Laden continues to elude capture. March 30th, 2003, Donald Rumsfeld told ABC News, we know where the WMDs are. April 1st, 2003, remember this one? PFC Jessica Lynch is recovered by U.S. forces. What the Pentagon framed as a heroic rescue was later revealed to have been staged. More credit coming. May 1st, 2003, President Bush lands on USS Abraham Lincoln and announces mission accomplished. July 2nd, 2003, the war in Iraq escalates and Bush gives this warning. There are some who uh, feel like that, you know, the conditions are such that they can attack us there. My answer is bring them on. So famous and never forgotten. March 24th, 2004, President Bush jokes about WMDs at the radio and television correspondence dinner. Here's a dandy. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> April 28th, 2004, images of torture at Abu Ghraib are revealed. September 7th, 2004, the death toll of U.S. soldiers in Iraq, it reaches the plateau of 1,000. And on October 29th, bin Laden releases an audio tape claiming, claiming he personally directed the 19 hijackers that hit the United States. January 12th, 2005, WMD, weapons of mass destruction, the search in Iraq is declared over. May 30th, 2005, Dick Cheney said that the insurgency was in its last throes. Let's not stop. There's a lot of credit to go around. October 26, 2005, military deaths, that toll reaches now 2,000. At a time, it was the fourth deadliest month in Iraq. Do those families deserve anything? Late 2005, George W. Bush, well, he took the bold action and dissolves the bin Laden unit in the CIA. You could say that's depleting resources. That's arguable. February 22nd, 2006, Iraq's Golden Mosque in Samarra, badly damaged in a bomb attack that kills over 1,000. November 8th, 2006, Donald Rumsfeld resigns as Secretary of Defense. Not long after January 19th, 2007, the cost of the war, well, it rises to a dandy number of $8.4 billion per month, your tax dollars for lies. April 16th, 2007, the death toll of U.S. soldiers now reaches 3,300. April 25th, 2007, Laura Bush tells the Today Show, no one suffers more than their president and I do. August 7, 2007, the number of troops in Iraq reaches the highest level of the war with approximately 162,000 forces on the ground. Followed by the date March 23, 2008, the death toll of U.S. soldiers in Iraq now reaches the plateau of 4,000 lives. The list could go on forever. But we didn't even include the economic mess Bush handed the President of the United States right now, President Obama. Listen to what President Bush told Fox News in an exit interview in 2008. How badly do you want to get Osama bin Laden before the end of your time in office? Uh, he, he, he will uh, he'll be gotten uh, by a president. The most accurate prediction that George W. Bush ever made was right there. It's the credit. It's all about the credit. So President Obama gets the job done. And not being an egomaniac, being a man of respect and dignity, being a man that certainly doesn't want to scar the office of the presidency, he does the correct thing. He goes to ground zero because the families need it.
The country needs it. It's a time of unity. It's a time to heal. It's a time to move forward. And the president, in the wake of all the media chatter that's out there, he invites President Bush to join him today at Ground Zero. And the president says, nah, I'm going to stay out of the spotlight through a spokesman. But then this story pops up in the New York Daily News today that President Bush is upset that his administration isn't getting enough credit. What bothers me tonight about this story is that President Bush is not out there saying that story is not correct. I just decided to stay away, maybe for personal reasons. It's not about credit, and it should not be about credit. This is a low moment for America. We have a chance now to bring the country together. And let's just speculate a little bit here tonight if we can. Do we know President Obama, the kind of character that he has? Do you think that President Obama would ask former President George W. Bush to come to the Ground Zero Memorial, where it is, and try to discredit him? Or do you think that he might take a moment, we're just speculating here, that maybe President Obama in front of the families would have turned and thanked President Bush for his efforts on the war on terror. But remember, it's about that petty thing called credit. I'm proud that President Obama took the high road after taking out Osama bin Laden. He tried to share the credit in a very heartfelt moment with the victims, with the families. They're victims. They're still alive. But they have been victimized by a terrorist who is no longer on the face of the earth. And the president was ready to take the high road. But because of petty partisan garbage, according to the New York Daily News, it's about credit. Just another sad chapter in the Bush Congressman administration. Alan Grayson. Years. Congressman, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Do you believe that the Bush administration deserves any credit for killing Osama bin Laden? Well, Sarah Palin was, of course, kind enough to give him some credit for that. But I'd like to give him some credit, too. I'd like to give him some credit for introducing America to $4 a gallon gasoline. I'd like to give him credit for, in the last 18 months of his administration, wiping out 20% of our national net worth, taking us from $62 trillion, the result of 200 years plus of work by people, all the way down to $50 trillion in just 18 months. That's $40,000 out the window for every single man, woman, and child in this country. I'd like to give him credit for that. I'd like to give him credit for the 50 million Americans who he left without any sort of health coverage, people who can't see a doctor when they're sick. So let's give credit where credit is due. He is the worst president of my lifetime. For years, I thought he was neck and neck with Richard Nixon. But now I'm convinced he was the absolute worst. Let's give him credit. Congressman, about the story in the New York Daily News today, what do you think the real story is? Do you think that President Bush didn't show up today and decline the invitation of President Obama because of credit? I suspect that President Bush might have been passed out drunk the last three or four days. So I'm not sure he made any conscious decision at all. Uh, moving forward, why is it that Democratic presidents always have a hard time when it comes to security and Democrats are always on the defensive and no matter what the scenario is or how the facts are laid out to the American people, it's always the Republicans going on the offensive, even in a moment like this. Your thoughts? I don't know. I, you know, Republicans seem to be good at starting wars, but they're not very good at winning them. And they're certainly not very good at ending them. It takes a Democrat to end the war, and I'm still hoping we'll see that from President Obama, ending two wars that the Republicans started. And moving forward, do you think President Obama has uh, now secured any kind of rhetoric that might be out there to debunk it right on back that he has this thing known as national security all figured out? Has his credibility really risen as the polls show it? Yes, he's delivered. He has delivered to the American people on this very important issue. You could see people cheering in the streets when the word got out. They were as happy as they were on VE Day or VJ Day, because that particular war is over now. The war that, the, that was needed to bring Osama bin Laden to justice, that has been accomplished. And it is odd that it happened on the same day on the calendar as George Bush told us mission accomplished years and years ago when he hadn't accomplished much of anything at all. Former Congressman Alan Grayson, great to have you with us tonight. Say not enough. 94% of you watching say way too much.